Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support, please subscribe. The Tragic Death of Jane Seymour, Third Wife to Henry VIII. Jane Seymour has gone down in history as being the wife that gave Henry VIII, the ruthless king, all he wanted. She gave him a son, an heir to the Tudor dynasty. Now Jane first appeared on the scene as a lady-in-waiting for Catherine of Aragon, and then again as lady-in-waiting for Anne Boleyn. Historians have debated over the centuries as to whether Jane was merely a political chess piece in a bigger game. Her family was powerful, and they were savvy enough to place Jane under the nose of King Henry when his second wife Anne had failed to provide him with the oh-so-wanted son and heir to the throne. Or was Jane just as ambitious as Anne Boleyn had once been? Did she use her promise of modesty and virtue to entice the king? The truth is, we will never really know. But today, Jane's beginning with Henry is not what we are discussing. But in fact, we want to look at Jane's life just before the birth of her son, and then her death just 12 days later. Jane and Henry had been trying to conceive an heir to the throne for around seven months before she fell pregnant with Edward. Some historians believe that during this time, Jane could have suffered from possibly two miscarriages. But then, in the early 1537, rumours of the Queen Jane's pregnancy were confirmed and celebrations were held to honour the wonderful event. Now, at the time, Jane and Henry were living at Hampton Court Palace, a palace previously renovated to honour Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. Anne and Henry had taken great pride in their home, but when Anne was executed and Henry then married Jane, everything, well, almost everything, that represented Anne was taken down and destroyed. When Jane came along, the great watching chamber was decorated in her honour, including her emblem. Henry, with news of her pregnancy, wanted to make the royal apartments as comfortable and appropriate for a royal laying in as he could, because Jane then spent the remainder of her pregnancy lying in. Until she gave birth to a son, Jane's labour was long and arduous and unbeknown to anyone she was now on a downward slope. Henry now had the long-awaited heir to his throne, Edward. The Tudor dynasty had a legitimate successor, and after a long 28 years of trying. Jane's condition, now thought to be caused from an infection during the birth, had made her feel weak and exhausted. Jane gave birth on the 12th of October, and three days later, the young prince was christened. Now, I have looked at multiple sources in relation towards Edward's christening. Some state that Jane was not permitted to attend due to a tradition surrounding a royal christening, but others say she was in attendance, but because of how she was feeling, she did not stay long and soon retired to her rooms, where her condition soon deteriorated. It is reported that Henry was distraught, he stayed by Jane's side, for he loved her for giving him a son. Henry sourced the best doctors to try and save her. But Henry VIII, the king, the head of the Church of England, the most powerful man in the country, was lost. How could he save her? It is recorded that belief of good prayers saving her was the last hope, but poor Jane perished, an infection 
caused by a long and hard labour with complications. Jane, on the 24th of October, only 12 days after the birth of her son, died. Some reports state that Jane died from complications of a caesarean section, but this has been dubbed as highly unlikely as there is no evidence of major blood loss or excessive bleeding. Today, it is generally believed, especially with modern day medical knowledge, that Jane most likely died from purpural fever, also known as childbed fever. And in a sad twist of fate, Jane's sister-in-law, Catherine Parr, would then suffer the same fate. Now Jane's funeral was solemn but magnificent. She was given a state funeral. Princess Mary acted as chief mourner, whilst Henry spoke of Jane as his true wife. Henry also left instructions that when the time came of his death, he was to be buried alongside her at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Now in a recent visit to Hampton Court Palace, we were able to see the Great Hall and the Watching Chamber, but we were unable to see the Tudor Royal Apartments where Jane gave birth to a king, but later died. Although, they do just lie beyond a door that is closed to the public. Regardless, you can really imagine and picture the events unfolding as you venture through the Tudor aspects of the palace. The joy, the laughter and the excitement, as well as the pain, sadness and torment. There is a legend that Jane, unable to leave this earthly plane, still roams the pebbled grounds of Clock Court. She is said, on Edward's birthday, to ascend the stairs leading to the Silver Stick Gallery, dressed in white and carrying a candle. The legend says that Jane has a heavy conscience and feels guilty for what happened to Anne Boleyn, her queen, and then the part she played afterwards. Jane is said to be unable to enter the pearly gates until she is forgiven by Anne Boleyn. Do you believe in the ghostly realm? Is it really Jane wandering the palace? Or is it a story passed from the visitors to spark one's imagination? You decide. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.